How the hell did this guy become champion? It was a five round war. There's a big smile on your face. Was it fun for you? Yeah, that was a f***ing at UFC 297, a new middleweight champion was crowned, and it was someone most, no, actually no one expected, Drickus Duplessis. Listen, I'm not calling it a robbery, it was a really, really close fight. A few short years ago, he was thought of as the next middleweight gatekeeper, a slightly better version of Derek Brunson, but here he is today, as the king of 185 and possibly on track to becoming a legit superstar in the company. We've asked this question before, and each time he was expected to gas out and get beaten into a pulp. DDP went out there and he made a damn fool out of everyone, me included. And it's not like Drickus Duplessis is very great in one area that he can, you know, take advantage of. Fighting business is one of my favorite new channels going right now. Prior to his UFC debut, Drickus had built quite the reputation for himself in his own country of South Africa. His record was near flawless, his style was entertaining, and as a bonus, he was no stranger to trash talk and pre-fight animosity. All good attributes for success in the modern MMA world, and in both EFC and KSW, Drickus was a fan favorite, a star, a champion, even a double champion. The only one in EFC history. I saw it a million times, but I never really imagined him feeling this good. And yeah, I am. And then the UFC came knocking on his door. The UFC called and you know, they said, can you make weight in 10 days? And I said, most certainly I can make weight. Being a hyped up prospect meant increased scrutiny and while DDP knocked out his first two opponents in the UFC, fans were not really sold on him. Obviously, as you come up in leagues and face greater oppositions, the pressure and expectation levels comes up as well. And UFC fans made their noise right away. I don't think Drakus is pretty good, to be honest. He's kind of like, an okay fighter that keeps winning fights. Because I'm obviously looking past Drickus Duplessis, who is a dead man walking, all right? Let's just get this out of the way. He is going to get destroyed. I do like Duplessis, I just don't. His cardio and stuff, I think is gonna be an issue. The Brad Tavares fight raised some serious concern about his cardio, and his technique was said to be a downgrade from his supposed predecessor, Derek Brunson. He had enough strength and size to physically bully his opponent and land the knockout shots, but against the elite of the middleweight division, Drickus was going to be hitting air, and then the canvas, no doubt about it. After defeating Brad Tavares, DDP was set to face Darren Till, a former welterweight title challenger and not a middleweight contender, but his striking technique was far superior to DDP's. What do you expect with Drickus Duplessis? Drickus has got the biggest test of his life in May, the biggest name he's fighting in his life. And according to some, this was the end of the hype train. Darren Till versus... This guy fights like... <laughs> He's in the streets. We were proven wrong. Yeah, this actually might become a trend here, as Drick has beat the hell out of Darren Till in the first round, recovered from much of the second, and submitted Till in the last. Somehow, he fluked a win here too, but his victory catapulted him to contender status. During the middle of all of this, Drick has got the attention of the middleweight champion, Israel Adesanya. I'm gonna take a bow to Africa. I'm the African fighter in the UFC. We breathe the African air. We wake up in Africa every day. We train in Africa, we're African born, we're African raised. That's an African champion and that's who I'll be. The bad blood was legit and there was an easy route for DDP. Keep talking, keep active on social media and keep winning and the door would be wide open. Derek Brunson was standing in his way next and DDP had reached his ceiling. The gatekeeping king of the middleweight division had dispatched of so many rising contenders and this wasn't new to him. Is there anything he presents you haven't seen at this point in your career? Like you said, you're the veteran, he's the new guy. Is there anything he does that, that you haven't seen before? No, nah, he don't really do anything that I haven't seen before. He's a tough guy, a lot of forward action, comes to fight. In what was probably the most sloppy UFC fight I had ever seen, both the Trickus and Derek gasped pretty early and the first to fall down was eventually Brunson, as DDP had squeaked in yet another W on his resume. How did he do it? I don't know, don't ask me. But all I know is that he did, and he was even ready to face the former champion to prove his championship title opportunity was locked in. And, the, and it's highly likely that Robert Whitaker beats DDP. That's just the reality of it. There's DDP's young, he's a very physical, physical fighter, but there's a ton of holes in this game. He can't make the mistakes in his fight with Whitaker that he made against Derek Brunson. Robert Whitaker, who only lost to Adesanya at 185, in some ways the Reaper was even more terrifying than Izzy, but DDP wanted that fight and kudos to him, but there was no way he was going to beat frickin' Whitaker. Stop the fight. They don't need to fight. 
He fluked it against Till and Brunson, but Whitaker was just in another galaxy. Yeah, I told you this might become a trend here. Dirkus went punch for punch, point for point with Bobby Knuckles, and he won the first round with a nasty trip and some ground and pound, but Whitaker was going to get the timing down eventually, and then he was... Turns out, Drickus got it down first, and he became the second middleweight to actually defeat Robert Whittaker. It was official now, the next challenger was DDP, and with this performance, some fans began to appreciate how good this dude was. You find it interesting when I tell you of the last 12 days, he is the number one headline in our sport. But some asterisk remained. Was Robert Whittaker in his prime anymore? Questions for later, as Israel was in the octagon right after and following the interaction between champion and challenger, the upcoming middleweight title fight was set to be one of the biggest in recent memory. Out of nowhere, Sean Strickland showed up, talked a whole bunch of shit as most expected, but we didn't expect him to actually beat Adesanya, but at UFC 293 he did, and another shockwave rattled the middleweight division. Whitaker gone, Israel gone, and now it was up to Strickland and Duplessis to kickstart the next chapter. Can I get agreement? Do the f death. Do the f death. This was it. Jerkis was set to headline UFC 297. By this point, we had gotten some answers. He had power, size, good enough technique, but his cardio was a limiting factor. And in order to beat Sean Strickland, you need a five-round gas tank, takedowns mixed in with strikes and constant pressure to keep Sean on the back foot. Double C hits hard. Uh, and, and Strickland is like this cardio machine and I, I going with uh, Strickland 2024. I think for five rounds is better for uh, Strickland. Sean Strickland with his solid fundamentals and elite cardio was simply a bad style matchup. But guess how that turned out? For the first time in his MMA career, Drake's Duplessis went the distance, all five rounds. And by the end of it, the last question was answered. This guy had it all. And he was the new middleweight champion. Never a top 15, never a top 10, never a top 5, no chance in hell number one contender. He can't pull it off and become champion, he simply cannot. I know this sport is built on unpredictability and underdogs rising to the occasion, but this was something else because Drake's Duplessis didn't just prove us wrong, he made us all look like fools. UFC champion in his fourth year, already a part of some of the most heated feuds, able to talk well and decently charismatic. Drickus definitely has all the attributes to become a star. Now, the most important and difficult task remains in front of him. Stay consistent. Get YouTube SEO Masterclass, editing, breakdowns, all previous and upcoming videos, music, playlists, downloadable thumbnails, your name in these wonderful credits, and so much more on Patreon. Have a look at it right here. And with that being said, I gotta bounce. I'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace out.